All righty. Hey, everybody. This is Sean Kitzman here, and I am joined by Kevin Wood from uh, Adaptive Massage. And where, where are you at in New York? I'm in a small uh, village in western New York. So I have a really important question to ask you. Are you a Yankees fan? Oh. Are you a Yankees fan? I'm getting just all kinds of echoing. Oh, really? On your end, you're yeah. getting echoing? You're you're clear now, but it kind of froze up for a second. Okay, all right. Are you a Yankees fan? I am a little bit. All right. Okay. Well, when that was an important <laughs> question, we would have got right off the call if you weren't, because I'm a big Yankees fan. But anyway, so from Western New York, where at? A uh, little village called Westfield, kind of nestled right against Lake Erie. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then, have you lived there all your life? No, I grew up in the area. Did eight years in the military, and then ended up moving out here about six months ago. Sure, sure. What what branch of the service were you in? Army. Army. All right. Cool. Cool. So how in the heck did you go from army to massage? Because that's kind of maybe a little, that's a weird path, right? It's a really weird path. Well, I, I got out of the army in early 2012, jumped right into college, got my associate's degree in business administration. Mm -hmm. Was uh, really having no luck finding a job, anything like that. So I just picked up some security guard work and, uh, was working on a bachelor's degree I didn't care about. Sure. And then my mom just happened to have a friend who was a massage therapist. So I talked to her a little bit and got kind of interested, went and toured to school and everything just kind of fell into place from there. Uh, let's see, probably two weeks classes were starting. So I just put in a notice for the job, jumped right into classes. Had Super. exactly had exactly enough time left on my GI Bill too to cover massage school. So nothing came out of pocket on that. Nice. Instant ROI. That's what you like. Gotta love that. So, um, and then how long have you been in practice for? I've only been, uh, my private practice since October of last year. And then did you work another place before that? I'm still working another place right now while building my practice. So that yeah. way I don't feel like I have to rush to, uh, pick up every client that calls or has an interest. That way I can be a little more selective and take my time building a practice. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and what kind of practice is it that you work at currently? Outside of yours? Why are you freezing up so much? Oh, uh, that kind of, uh, that kind of cut out, but I think you asked where I'm currently working. Yeah. Like tell me, talk to me a little bit about that practice. Uh, I'd say I uh, spa okay so it's a uh, just general relaxation hold on one second sorry about that my wi-fi is is for whatever reason being a little funky hold on there we go let's try that all right all right so like a day spa kind of relaxation massage oh uh, yeah pretty much you yeah. know body scrubs massages sure and then how long have you worked there for? I've been there almost three years. Three years. That was the, uh, it's the only place I've worked since I've been licensed in New York. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so you've been there for three years. You opened up your own practice in October. And talk to me about that. Like, what did you experience coming? Well, how about this? Let's talk about this. Because this is something that, that I think that I would love to talk to more people about. Um, and really talk to more male massage therapists about. Like, how have you, how has your been, been your experience getting into the industry as a guy and, and getting out, you know, not only through school, but actually into the, into the industry itself? I haven't, uh, school made me feel like it was going to be a huge issue, but it really hasn't been. That's like super my three, cool. My three years at the day spa, I can think of maybe a handful of instances where uh, females had an issue with a male therapist and I mean, part of the reason there is the front desk does a great job of asking the clients beforehand if they're okay with a male therapist. So it's generally not an issue, but. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Cause, cause I know when I got out of school, when I was in school, oh man, you know, I had a number of occasions where, you know, people just outright refused to work with me. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, so now why, why opening up your own practice? I mean, talk to me a little bit about that. What do you, what, what was the reason for that? I just uh, started to get burnt out on the like one and done and mostly relaxation focus. I want to have the more therapeutic relationship really, uh, you know, help people improve the quality of their life. And sure. Actually, sure. Uh, be able to see the 
changes I'm helping to uh, facilitate. Yeah. And then, so what type of work do you like to do? Tell me, tell me a little bit about your practice. Up until recently, I really enjoyed doing like a lot of deeper tissue work, but I've uh, recently started doing uh, the, a table time massage course and I'm starting to get into that quite a bit. I'm finding it extremely enjoyable and yeah. uh, a lot easier on my body. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, are you, did you, where did you take that type, table type course through? I signed up for the uh, subscription service with Robert. Oh yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I'm, doing, I'm working my way through the online course. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, <clears throat> I looked into Thai massage early into my career as well. Um, I think it's a great, uh, I think it's a great modality. I think there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it for sure. Um, and a lot of very broad applications too, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm finding it to be just as effective so far as a deep tissue work. Like today I had a client come in with some uh, right shoulder issues and her pain she was putting at about a six with diff pretty much any type of movement. And by the time we were done work and she was down to like a zero or one, being able to move her shoulder in which direction without any pain. Yeah. The, the important part that I think we all miss, um, that unfortunately for myself, you know, it only took me about 16 years to figure this out. Um, lots of people are figured out quicker than I do, but, um, is we're really, the modality doesn't matter as much as, is how you, how the brain perceives safety, you know? So, um, I was just talking to a client about this earlier on today and, uh, you know, digging in really deep. Cause I don't, I don't do any deep, I haven't done deep work, deep work. Um, and geez, oh Pete, you know, probably the better part of, you know, seven or eight years. And, and the reason why for that is because the brain, you know, uh, being perceiving safety and not perceiving safety. And that's a really interesting thing that I don't think a lot of people think about. And I think that you probably get that a bit from, you know, being in the army and understanding what, you know, a safe situation feels like and a not safe situation feels like, and just how, you know, more at rest or, or at ease you are in, instead of in a heightened sense. So, um, you know, that's a, that I, I've learned a lot of the, that through my martial arts training, you know, um, being, in, being a jujitsu practitioner, having somebody on top of you trying to choke your face off, you know, you're, you, you figured out, you know, why am I doing this dumb stuff that I know I shouldn't do, you know? Right. You, you kind of figure out how to preserve your energy so that you can have a nice burst to uh, get out of that hold. Yeah. Hopefully more often <laughs> than not, no, but hopefully, um, so yeah, you know, that the perception of the brains, you know, of the brain feeling safe or not. So it doesn't matter the modality, you know, I mean, people, cause the brain doesn't care about the modality I mean, and, and, you know, it just doesn't. So, right. and, and how are your clients taking to the work? Do they, are they, are they pretty receptive to it? Uh, so far, everyone that I've uh, used it on has like really enjoyed it. So yeah. Yeah. Th that's a large part of that has to do with you being, you being comfortable enough with the work and, and just being comfortable enough selling it. And then I'm also just making sure I'm getting uh, plenty of feedback through them, from them while I'm working. Yeah, that's super important too. Make sure I'm not overstretching and Yeah, that's super important. You know, like getting that feedback is really, really, really necessary. Because if you don't get the feedback, then you don't know what's going on. So, um, yeah, that's that's a super important thing. Um, and it's good. It's good that you're that you've learned already to to really work on communicating with your clients. And that's sometimes one of those things that takes a long time for people to figure out. Yeah, the way, I, the way I looked at it kind of from the start is if you're not communicating with your client, then you don't know where to improve and you don't know what you're doing well. So you're just kind of guessing. Did they talk to you in school about not talking to your clients and maintaining this serene and zen-like? Uh, not too much. My school seemed to be a little more uh, medical oriented. So it was cool. And then there was a lot of just really solid instructors that I worked with. Super good. That's super important because I know some people, you know, like they told us not to talk to anybody, you know, I'm like, have you met me? That's not possible. 
Like, yeah, you know? it never made any sense to me. It's like, you're going to be with this person for an hour and 90 minutes. And like, don't talk to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. I can't, I can't be with myself for longer than five minutes without talking to myself. So I don't know. I could do it with another person. So, so let's talk about um, how, <laughs> how did you figure out, how did you find me? Uh, through the massage entrepreneurs group. Yeah. And then um, you, you, you reached out to me um, before, like I started doing the, the, that hundred day challenge that I'm doing a little bit about just talking about your practice a little bit. Right. And um, uh, yeah, I was, I was still really in the beginning stages. I think I was actually uh, just making a switch when I first started, I was going to try to do a mobile massage practice. And then I, after doing a little research, I just didn't feel like the community could support what I would need to charge to uh, actually be able to make a comfortable living doing that. Ah, man, I love to hear that. I love to hear doing some market research before you start to do it. I mean, because the, you know, the other end of that is you try it and then it doesn't work. And then, right. you know, you have the experience, but man, the more intel you can get, right? The Oh yeah, the, the better decision you can make. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a common theme there, isn't there? <laughs> There's a, there, it doesn't surprise me why people, you know, from the, from the service make good business people because that's really what business is. You know, it's just, it's just getting enough information and making an educated decision, you know? Yeah, the, the problem is when you uh, worry about having too much information. Yeah, that, that is definitely... Yeah, it's kind of a, a fine line you have to walk. Yeah, yeah, because you, you have to be able to, you have to be able to balance out that the the what's too much and what's not enough. You know? Right. You have to be able to have a certain level of uh, like certainty, but there's always going to be some type of risk. You're never going to have the complete picture until you actually try. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's, you should do these podcasts and not me. That That's way better than what I, <laughs> how I say it. So, um, so you decided that you were going to kind of take up the, this, this practice of a hundred days of posting content. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, this is the book, uh, This is Marketing by Seth Godin. And um, I did it because initially, because I wanted to show the, the, the community and the industry, like, look, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be super sexy. Creating content doesn't have to be super sexy. It can be, it can be really simple. Uh, and it's funny because a friend of mine uh, and I talked a couple weeks ago and he was like, so talk to me about this Kevin Wood guy. And so I said, yeah, you know, um, blah, blah, blah. And we started talking and he says, man, his posts look like your old posts. So <laughs> they look quite a bit like my old synergy functional anatomy posts. And I was like, yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, I don't know if he's even looked at that page, but it was pretty cool to kind of watch. Um, you know, it's been cool to watch your kind of evolution with it. So talk about why you decided that you were going to do it. Um, and then, you know, just kind of start from the beginning of how did you decide that this was an important thing for you to do? I don't know. It was kind of just a split second decision. I just kept seeing, uh, I think you were maybe on day 10 and then, uh, Rebecca had shared something as well. And she was on the same day as you. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this too. I didn't have a like concrete reason why I just decided I was going to start doing it. Sure. And initially, what did you find? Like, like, what did you find out about the practice initially? And then um, how, and how far are you into it? Cause you're what day 50 something. I believe I'm going to be on day 57. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So what did you find initially? What have been the big surprises on both ends for you? Um, as far as like positively, what have you found? And then, you know, what was, what were some of the things that you've literally learned about yourself in the practice? Uh, probably to start, I was, entirely too worried about being a perfectionist with it. Like you're constantly saying, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's free content, you know? But it sometimes I sit in there maybe an hour and a half. Too. It has kind of evolved with calm down to 20 minutes if I absolutely have to. Yeah, dude. Like everybody starts that way. That's the thing that people don't realize. Like, man, when I first started creating content, it was like literally a half hour and it would take me like 30 to 40 minutes to just create a half, you know, like, like a paragraph, you know? So it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. 
I mean, probably uh, one of the big takeaways I've had from it so far, though, is I feel like I'm really starting to find my voice, find my story. Talk to me a little bit about that. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, before, you know, I was basically just like a cream and glide type of massage all the time. And now I've really taken up uh, quite an interest in the movement aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like I really like mobilizing joints and being able to feel the, uh, where the restriction and tension is and, you know, kind of try to address the uh, functional movements instead of just beating on muscles all day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what do you feel like the practice, how do you feel like that helped you get you to there? Uh, just by exploring different aspects of massage or muscles that I wasn't thinking about on a regular basis, like by sitting down and actually creating something each day, just got like my brain working a little better and thinking about my practice in different ways. Sure. How, has it helped you at all with your clients? Has it helped you like in your communication with them? It has uh, definitely helped in that aspect as well. Yeah. Tell me about that a little bit. I just feel like uh, I'm a little more polished, a little more well-versed at a, uh, you know, saying, hey, client, this is what you have going on. This muscle is, you know, restricted or tight, so it's causing some issues here. I don't yeah. feel like I have to uh, sit there and think quite as much before I start to explain to them. Sure. Have you noticed any um, differences between how your clients then interact with you because of that? Uh, I've actually had a few instances where before I can even ask for someone to rebook, they're like, when do you want me to come back? Nice. Yeah. And that's the funny thing about a practice like this. Those are unintended consequences, right? Like you, when you started out, that wasn't what you thought was going to happen. No, I actually, I started out with no expectations. So it was actually kind of a nice place to start. Yeah. And, and you can't, and the thing about that is you can't, all of the th things that you just talked about, I can tell you because I've done it on a number of different occasions, I can tell you that those are things that are going to happen because I know for myself and I know from other people. Um, but you can't get that yourself until you, you know, actually experience that. And, and it's kind of one of those things that once you get it, you can't take it away. Right. Right. It's something you just, it's always yours. Once you realize it, you're like, Oh, I can do this to uh, have this consequence happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool. And, and the bonus of it is, is that, all of these things that you're getting out of this is they're free. You know what I mean? Like all it is, is your own time. Yeah. Probably a, a couple other things I've noticed too, is I'm actually starting to build a network of other professionals that I've had, I've had a lot of uh, other therapists start following the page. I've had a few reach out to me, you know, thank me for the content I'm making or saying it's great. I had one person reach out and ask me if I was going to make like a quick reference guide. Sure. Yeah, quick reference guide um, for, you know, $25 or something, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, like you, that, that'll always happen when you create content, you'll always have people that want to reach out and get shit for free because they don't want to do it themselves, <laughs> you know, right. so, but that's awesome too, because that's another unintended consequence, right? Like, so, so the cool part about what you're doing now is, and, and you're not a client of mine. So, you know, you're, uh, you're not paying me up for any of these things that we're talking about. So let's be <laughs> I should have prefaced that from the beginning, right? But you're kind of going on the journey that I talk about too, right? And, and now, I hope at least for you, um, you can kind of see like this track through creating content that provides value, takes you from service provider to educator to thought leader. I mean, you've just talked about those three things in your own way, right? right. And and, and each of those transitions happens. And the cool thing is it's happened for you in what, 57 days. Yeah, it's uh, been quick. Yeah, because you just show up on a regular basis. And you're just merely doing what you promise. Right? Like, that's all you've done. That's all you're doing. You're just doing merely what you promised. Yeah, I said I'd be there for 100 days. So that's what I'm doing, even if it's two sentences with a little picture. Correct. Yeah, because... You know, like, like Seth talks about um, a lot, you know, he's got over 7,000 blog posts that he's, you know, that he's done every day. And yeah, actually, uh, I, I just finished uh, binge listening to every season of Akimbo, so. Yeah, I've gotten through the first season, so, but he talks about like, you know, what does he say, like 50% of those, those 7,000 are decent or something like that, you know, like you're not <laughs> right. going to 
you're not, it's not going to be perfect every day. And you're going to get posts that, man, you know, like kick it out of the park. And then you get other ones that just like, they're like dribblers, you know, like they don't get it out of the infield. You don't even make the past pitchers model, you know? Right. And so, you know, it's just that volume, <clears throat> but the volume is just based on you doing the practice. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like I've, I've noticed a huge improvement just in the, you know, what, 56 days I've done. Like, I feel like my writing has got more concise. I'm able to put my thoughts together a lot quicker and a lot more clear. It's just, you know, one of the side consequences of doing something daily. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can take this, um, and you can take this and apply this to anything you do in your practice. You know, you like just start with these small little steps and then all of a sudden, you know, um, you, you, you turn around and you're like, wow, I'm actually kind of good at this. Right. And it kind of comes out of nowhere because when you're focused on the small steps, you're not really paying attention to the big picture. So it's able to uh, build without your thought, own thoughts getting in the way. And, and the funny thing about this is if you continue to do this regularly for three years and you went through this progression and learning curve, people would look at your content and they would go, oh, you're just so good. You're, you just must have been a great writer, right? Or you, right. this just must come natural to you. No, it came with practice, right? And it, it's, it's, the, it's the craziest thing that people don't, they don't understand that growth mindset versus the fixed mindset, you know? Yeah, a lot, I think a lot of it comes down to like the instant gratification too. People don't want to take the time or put in the work. They just want to either throw money at something or just have something handed to do and be like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, and that's a that there's a big consequence on your brand with that too. You know, I mean, like you're have have you attempted to um reach out to other professionals in your area yet and and talk with them and kind of point them back to your Facebook page yet? I I reached out before I started doing the Facebook stuff, so that didn't go quite too well too well. I was super nervous and just I didn't I think I was in the mindset where I didn't feel like I should be there talking to other professionals yet. Sure. Yeah. 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 But, so yeah, this, so one of the other things that, that I've noticed that happened with it. So you already have professionals looking at your work saying like, Hey, this stuff is pretty good. And now what you could do is you can start to reach back around to people. And you know, when they ask you about your website, you could say, well, Hey, look, I'm, I'm really active on my Facebook page. Here's my Facebook page. And they'll look at it and they'll see this body of work. Yeah, my website's absolutely terrible. I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you can only do so many things, you know. I mean, there's there's only so many, you know, hats you can wear. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a lot of them right now besides building my own practice and working at the spa. I'm finishing up my bachelor's degree right now, too. So what, what do you finish? What do you finish, finish your degree in? Uh, it's just general studies. It was just a goal, a personal goal I'd set once I got out of the military that I'd get a bachelor's degree. So I'm like, I'm just going to get it done. Nice. Nice. Um, so what do you, what do you see like, you know, uh, in your practice, like where, where do you see that you're kind of, what are your next aspirations? I mean, eventually I think I would like to uh, actually have a clinic focused maybe on mobility and uh, pain relief. Sure. And, uh, even just the uh, short 57 days I've been doing the content so far, it's made me really think about maybe eventually trying to get into the education field as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, I feel like I have some just innate skill at uh, being able to explain things well and nice, you know, pass things on. So nice. hopefully once I have enough of a uh, body of knowledge, I'll be able to provide some real value for other professionals as well. Nice, yeah. Have you, um, have you gained any clients out of the, your posts yet? I've had a couple who came in for a sciatic pain based off a post I did on sciatica. Nice. And yeah, I mean like free, right? Yeah. So one of the things that you can do, and I talked about this earlier this morning on my, on my Facebook live post, um, is figure out the posts that you, that are kind of like evergreen posts or they're like pillar posts and and the ones that really get engagement. Um, and then, you know, that those are posts that you can start to like run, like, uh, 
you know, start to draw attention to with Facebook ads and things like that, um, or just boosting them. So, that, so certain people and demographics start to see those things. Cause you know, if people are coming into it or you're getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of interest in them, you know, then that it's the, the content is good enough, right? So, so you can start to drive a little bit more business or attention to your, your page that way as well. Okay. Didn't even really think of that yet. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you'll find, like, I have a couple, you know, blog posts. If you're, if you watch on the entrepreneurs group, like you'll see me repost five or six. I think a couple of them are ones that I sent you early on. Right. Like, like, uh, yeah, a couple of them about like cheap ways to uh, get clients during the summer. And... Yeah. Yeah. Those are like pillar evergreen posts, you know, like I've shared that I've shared that post within the last six months, probably 10 to 15 times in the massage entrepreneurs group. You know? and I, I, yeah. I can see how that would be like a really big foundation post for uh, your coaching practice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's low hanging fruit. Um, it's not a hard concept to understand. Um, you know, and so, but it provides value because I can tell you for sure that you can do all of those things for like maybe $300, right? Like, you know, and you, you should be able to get ROI on it like right away. So, you know, um, yeah, I mean, those are important things and, and you, and those are just things as you go along, you'll just start to curate. And that's also part of your own voice. Like, like that'll go from the, the bulk of your content into like, you know, four or five different posts or maybe 10 posts where that's really just you doing you really well. All right. That makes a lot of sense. And as you go along, you won't know what they are. Like I have one post that I hate, but everybody loves. Like I have a blog <laughs> post that I think is awful. Right. That everybody yeah, loves, you know, yeah, like, like 25,000 reads, like dumb. It, it adds no value to the industry other than it justifies why we charge what we charge. I mean, it's like, it's my, 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 my massage therapist charges dot, 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 dot. And, and my wife and I had a conversation about it. Uh, um, and that was like the, the, the inspiration for it. Cause her, my wife's coworker wouldn't come and see me because I charged more than her massage therapist that she had been going to for 800 freaking years for the same injury. And I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit more, but I'm going to get through it a lot quicker. And so then I started to think about it and I just wrote a, I, initially I wrote a Facebook post about it and it got shared so many times that I turned it into a blog post and then it's, you know, done just stupid. So as you go along, you'll find those, those posts that you'll, you know, that, that'll, that'll grab people's attention and they're the ones that you don't expect. Yeah, I've actually I noticed that with working too. Sometimes I'll feel like I did an absolute terrible massage and then the client will get up off the table and be like, that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> and then you look around the room and you were like, was, was I in that with you? Did <laughs> right. I do that? Yeah, no, trust okay, me. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done that before too, you know. And, and then eventually like that, you know, you, you get these, um, you just start to get your flow down because that's the important part, you know, um, you know, kind of getting your flow down. So, um, so cool. Like you're, uh, so after your hundred days, what are you going to do? Are you going to, have you, have you thought about that at all? I have been thinking about it. I still, I feel like it's going to be such an ingrained habit that it's going to be something I'm going to miss if I'm not doing it. Sure. Sure. And then I'm, It'd be silly to not continue on be disappointing people who have uh, been finding value, you know, so there's yeah, no the, point in, uh, building The most important part of that, I think, is what you just said, too, is that you would miss it. So it's not a fake thing, right? You would miss it. And, and that's important because, because it has value to you, you know? Oh, it does. I enjoy actually sitting down at the computer and thinking of something to uh, create for the night. Sure. Yeah. I, but like, there's such inherent value in that and people, people feel it, right? Like when you have to mail it in, people know that as well. Right. So, so yeah, no, I, dude, I think it's, I think it's awesome. And, and I'm glad we got a chance to kind of sit down and chat about this a little bit because uh, I wanted to get your take on it and see what you, you know, your experience was with this. Cause um, it was pretty cool. I was pretty blown away by you and Rebecca doing it. I want to get her on as well and talk to her um, and get her experience with it because 
um, I think we all have different experiences with it, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really good one so far. I'm kind of, I'll be uh, interested to see where I'm at at 100 days. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, you know, that's, that's just a little bit over three months. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a healthy body of work. And, and I had an old martial arts coach who actually introduced me, a martial arts business coach, who actually do, introduced me to Seth Godin's work. That's how I found out about Seth was to this guy named Tom Callis. And uh, Tom always says, if you do a hundred of something, you know, you're serious about it, right? Like, you know, if you did, you, if you did 25 push-ups, that's not bad. If you do 50 push-ups, a lot of people can do 50 push-ups, but if you do a hundred right. push-ups, that's a lot of push-ups, yeah. you know? So it's, it's, it's interesting because, because both you and Rebecca talked about hitting, kind of hitting the proverbial wall as well, you know, like, you know, that's, that's like mile third, or that's like mile 22 in a marathon, right? Everybody talks about right. it. mile 22, you hit it, you know? Yeah. So, um, and then pushing through that as well is a, is a really important piece of just proving to yourself that you can do that. Because the thing that I think that you'll see too, is like when you get into tougher continuing ed courses, um, that you actually have to do a lot of independent study on your own. Um, this is a great foundation for that, you know? Yeah, I'm constantly trying to uh, study or learn something new. Sure. I'd probably uh, toward the end of last year, I want to say probably between September and December, I read 35 or 40 different books. Sure. So what do you, what, real quick before we get off, because I think it's a really important thing to kind of like, you know, you're not just Kevin, the, the writer guy and the massage guy. So <laughs> what do you do for fun? What are, your, what are some of your hobbies? Oh, I really enjoy golf when I have the time. Right now, I don't have the time, plus there's snow on the ground. So. Sure, yeah, yeah. But then uh, reading is a hobby for me. Yeah, what, what, type of work, what, what type of stuff do you like? Uh, lately, it's been business, philosophy. Uh -huh. I what? really enjoy philosophy just because uh, you can if you really sit and think about it, it's applicable to so many other areas. Sure, sure, sure. It's kind of like uh, just piecing together a puzzle in your mind, figuring out how it can apply to something else. And sure, yeah. Um, and then who are, who are some of the authors that you really enjoy right now? Uh, Tim Ferriss, I really like his work. Yeah, he's a really, I didn't want to like Tim Ferriss for a long time, but he's a, he's, <laughs> I think he's just a really, he's a goofy, legit, authentic guy, you know? I mean, like. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's what I like about him. And yeah. And he asks like really, I listen to his podcast quite a bit too. And he asks, you know, really good questions. He like, does he have, provides. He, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of value to what he gets out of his guests. Yeah. He, he, he really has a good interviewing style. And of course, you know, he's lucky, right? He's been just yeah. always good at it, you know, cause, right. cause he and Rogan were like the first two guys that really popped you know, with, with podcasts that like everybody knows who Tim Ferriss is. Even if you yeah. don't know who Tim Ferriss, you know who Tim Ferriss is because the four hour work week, right. you know, if, 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 the only way that you wouldn't know who Rogan is by now is if you, you know, lived under a rock, you know, yeah. but I remember when Rogan's podcast came out, I was like, oh, that, oh what an ego, man, <laughs> what a, what an arrogant ass, you know, and now I listen to his stuff, you know? Right. So, so Tim Ferriss, who else? Well, let's see. Uh, Seth Godin, of course. Yeah. I actually, uh, no, no, I really don't go picked off authors. I just listen to, a, I listen to podcasts. If there's sure. a recommendation that comes up, I'll check out that book, throw it on an Amazon wish list. Sure. Yeah. So I'm kind of all over the place. There's some uh, like spiritual st type stuff in there too, some meditation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's all good stuff. So, well, cool, man. Well, I don't, I don't want to keep you much longer than I already have. I really appreciate you jumping on and talking about your journey here. It's been, uh, it's been super fun. Um, I'm excited to see where you go. Um, you know, I'm excited to watch your, you know, your career and your, your practice grow. And um, I think it'll be really cool to watch you build out, you know, a clinic. You know, I think that's a, those are some lofty aspirations, man. That's definitely something I couldn't do. I work with people, man. Like I just, I'm, I'm, I, I, as, as much of a cheerleader as I am, man, like I'm, I do better, like cheering people on. I do like, but having them next to me, oh God, I don't know that I could do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to either, but it's kind of where I want to head at this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think, I think you have a lot of experience though with it, you know, being in the army. I mean, like you have to learn to get along with people and manage them and, 
And even if you're not like in charge, right? Because there's a hierarchy that happens, right? So yeah, if you're, I mean, you're always, if you're in the military for longer than probably a year, there's always some area you're in charge. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you, you have to learn how to deal with, you have to learn how to manage and deal with people, you know? Yeah. So, so I think that's an important thing. I, I think, I think a lot of those skill sets that you'll, that you learned in the army, you know, and, and not even necessarily like set out to learn. This is another one of those unintended consequences, right? Like you right. went in the army and you did it and, you know, I think there's a lot of good leadership skills that come out of that because you get to learn how to, um, you have to learn how to lead. I mean, you know, if, if, and it doesn't matter even what your job is in the military, you know I mean? Like, cause there's always the impending threat of like, look, you could, you might need to go do this. Yeah. And you know? I mean, you're always a, when you're in the military, you're always a soldier first and your job second. Right. So. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, thanks again. And, uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll stop recording. We'll chat here for just a sec. All right.